Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, joining me are my three book bloggers, one series read-along co-host, Casey and Nicola. Today we're discussing The Dark Calling, book five in the Arcana Chronicles by Cressley Cole. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Join in this book discussion by finding me on Twitter as well as my book blogger co-host. Tweet at us using our special hashtag 3bloggers1series. That's using the numeric 3 and 1. Again, that's hashtag 3bloggers1series. If Twitter isn't your thing, no worries. You can join the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, and talk about the series with us there as well as other bookish topics. I hope to hear your thoughts on this book discussion, and the links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. Before we get started, I have to issue a spoiler warning. This is a roundtable book discussion, so nothing is off limits. You've been warned. Okay, guys, so we have a lot to jump into and talk about. But first, I'm going to let Nicola and Casey introduce themselves, and then we're going to just get going. Casey, you go first. Hey, everybody. I'm Casey. I've been a reviewer at Literary Escapism since 2010 and an editor at Heartful of Ink since 2017. I'm so excited to be here. Hey, everybody. My name's Nicola, and I've been blogging at alphaheroes.net for quite a while and um, a few other places, but this is my favorite place to guest spot, and I can't wait to talk about this book with you guys. Yes. Oh, we're almost to the end of this uh, series, and... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's just start. I guess there's so much to do, but you know, I kind of really like to have to say that we literally just picked up exactly where we left off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like that. What else did you guys like? Let's talk about what we liked before we get into the stuff we didn't like. I thought it was cool that they found a settlement where people had figured out a way to make a living. So I thought that was kind of encouraging. I like that as well, but I also didn't like it. Well, you know, as we found out, all was not well, all was not happy in that place. But, but there was yeah. there was a source of of you know people could survive there. See that though, I just that whole setup though made me wonder: How did you pull this off? Where did you get all these boats from? How did you string them together? <laughs> I'm like, how did that happen? You sound like me. How did this work? <laughs> What's okay. going on here? Yeah. Are you using super glue to hold them together? Or... Yeah. <laughs> you can accomplish a lot if you have no regard for human life. That's oh, true. true. Which is what they were doing. They just, all those people would die. And then they'd be like, we need more people. Yep. Cool place to live. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have more to say, but that was something that I liked about this book. Uh... I thought the pacing was really good. The pacing, like it was really exciting after the ending of the last one where she's like, oh my God, I'm pregnant, but I'm going crazy. I was really worried oh. that this book would just be her sitting in a tower, like rocking and crying and going crazy. But it wasn't. It was lots of action and adventure. And I appreciated that. There are a lot of issues with it, which we'll get into in just a second. <laughs> but I really appreciated that she wasn't just sitting in a tower, although she kind of did at that, in that shipping place. Yeah. Next mm-hmm. week. I like the Kentarch character a lot. Yeah, I liked him. Kentark. Kentarch. Yeah. The audiobook pronounced him Kentark. Okay. So that's what I'm rolling with. Um, yeah, I liked him. He's a good guy. Then you figured out, oh well damn, his she was dead the whole time. Mm-hmm. Damn. damn. That was messed up. Yeah. I was. Like that and was kinda sad. Her. Like you <laughs> yeah. found her remains but didn't believe it. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, I liked his character, I liked his strengths and his weaknesses and the way he drove his chariot um, and Mm -hmm. his powers are cool. His, um, I guess, cliffhanger there, because we don't know what happens to him exactly. Um, I would call that a bit of a plot hole, so we can get into that sooner rather than later if you want, but uh, I don't think enough time has passed for the remains to be unrecognizable, you know? So it's not like mm-hmm. we would only find bones after a couple months. You know, the, the clothes would still be there. The Any jewelry or anything like that would still be there. I just, I kind of doubted that they were unrecognizable or that there was any room for doubt there. 
he went crazy. True. He True. His mind broke, and then he spent months and months and months continuing to look for her. But she was already dead, and he knew it. Yeah. Because yeah. the right. whole time he was talking with Eric on the phone, he was like, I can't come to you because I have to look for my wife. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's been maybe a year now that she's dead. More? Two years? Closer to two years? Because two years is coming up. Hard to, but yeah. I don't know. Hard to say. It's That's one of the more believable things about the story in my <laughs> mind. <laughs> His mind broke. It works. Yeah, I suppose you could look at it that way. There are other things I want to question. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he was carrying her favorite beer around and, like, he was so obsessive about it. And and then just to find out, like, wow, you're kind of crazy this whole time. You're, like, delusional. I think they're all like a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so talking about dead people, I do... <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about when, you know, I guess... um Evie like finally realizes that Jack is alive, like for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like you've made this okay. So I knew it was just gonna go wrong. I just knew it. Uh-huh. I just knew she would see Jack and be like, uh, I need both of them. Let's shack up all together and just <laughs> let me have two men. That's what she wants. But I kind of felt yeah, but I kind of felt like, okay, so and it just happened to be that Ark was unavailable to you at this time because he's a low controlled. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you're going to fall right back in with Jack. Of course. I'm like, I mean, she did you? wait a month before they had sex. She did wait a month, but it's not like he <laughs> died. He's just controlled. He's not dead. So it's like, okay, now I am the first person to be like Team Jack, but my God, have some loyalty, woman. If you're going to be like, this is it. He's my man. We're doing this. We're pregnant together. I made a wedding ring for him. I just she feel destroyed. like, yeah. Is that their version of divorce? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess you broke my ring. We're divorced. Powder. <laughs> Powder. I just, I don't know. I just didn't like that. They just fell right back into step, I guess. I thought it was kind of interesting that both of the men have accepted that she really loves them both. Like they both, they've talked mm-hmm. about it and they don't like it, but they, they're not that jealous of each other particularly. They're just like, yeah, she, it's, it's, it's hard for her. They're like, this is Evie. Hmm? They're like, this is Evie. Yeah. She loves us both. Yeah. And, but they did. she's so hot i will accept that she loves another man it's fine but they but the, neither one of them <laughs> talks about sharing at all they, they don't like that plan so i guess i still like i say this series is fascinating to me because i just can't imagine how she's gonna how the author's gonna wrap it up so there's so much tension there's so many plot lines here there's so many characters left i don't know how she's gonna get it all wrapped up in one book I guess it'll be some kind of apocalypse mm-hmm. where most of them will die and lo- or or mm-hmm. they break the game and they all get to live. I don't know. This baby might break the game. Yeah. I hate the baby storyline. Me too though. I oh. kind of hate that. I don't want I don't like it. Oh, I'm like so it. pissed by it. <laughs> Especially in our current political standing. Yeah. Not the politics, but being forced to carry a baby that you don't want is just all kinds of triggering right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, when it was written, yeah. times were not quite as controversial, but uh, it sure does yeah. ring a whole bunch of political bells right now. I mean, because literally throughout this, almost the whole book, I should have made a note when her tune changed. This whole time, she's like bitching about being pregnant. She does not want that at all. And mm-hmm. then, like, at one point, it changes. But up until then, man, she was not about it. She was. It doesn't pissed. change a lot. I mean, she's not all gooey-eyed no. about it. No, she's not. No. I mean, I think she's accepted it, which is different from earlier. Wanting but... it. Mm-hmm. Or not wanting yeah. it. Yeah. Ugh, this baby. A lot of that had to do with Jack accepting it. You know, yeah, once Jack he accepted it and started gathering baby stuff, and she's like, oh, he's committed. I guess I need to be committed, too, because he's going to take care of this baby. I don't know if it was that oh. or if it was when Cersei 
call it a boy. Um, and then there was a moment, and I, I don't know if it was when she was on the ship with the, with the minor arcana, but there was a moment when she realized that her powers were not weak. They were bottled up. Mm -hmm. I think at that point, she, to me, that felt more like the turning point about, um, I don't know if accepting is quite the right word, but uh, some of her feelings about the babies became less negative because she'd been thinking that the baby was um, weakening her and, and, and draining her powers. And when she realized that that wasn't the case, I think that, that she stopped feeling so afraid of having the baby or being pregnant. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, they still don't have a, a safe person to deliver the baby. So no. me, I'm like, well, who the hell, what the hell? I guess we're going to go back like, you know, good old days where you just try to push a baby out on your own. <laughs> mm, I guess you don't have no damn doctor. Like what's world. going oh, on? Oh, you know what? But there's all that foreshadowing about the sick house. Oh, that's true. So, but that's run by make it the run. other yeah. minor group. Pentacles, I think. Pentacles, yeah. Uh, but they've talked about it in the last two books. They're going to have to go find out what's going on there. It's not just going to disappear. And they're not going to welcome them because once they find no. out what happened to the cups or whatever. Yeah. yeah, they know what happened to the cups. They yeah. know who Evie is. They'll figure out who the baby daddy is and they're going to try to kill them. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, but they may have, uh, they may have, uh, human doctors there that they've captured, captured or whatever. So, um, hmm. I don't know. I think that'll play, be a factor in the birth. Is all I'm saying. I don't know how which way it'll go. I I am so disgusted with the baby storyline. It's like even trying to think outside of the box with what could come, how they could fix this issue or address this issue. I just almost don't even want to think about it. Yeah, I think they're gonna yeah. the. the my prediction, and this is a prediction, I haven't read the last book because it's not out yet. Um, my prediction <laughs> is that they kill Richter and Zara somehow. Maybe Zara steals his luck and they were able to kill him and then somehow she goes down or converts. Um, but Zara and Richter go down and something happens to the game and all of the semi-good um, tarot survive. There'll probably be another red shirt to... to mess with our emotions right one of the good guys will go down mm -hmm. and uh but most of them will survive and become human and uh then the, things get a little fuzzy but it's going to have to do with the baby performing some kind of miracle mm. Mm. They, they mentioned the gods a couple times in yeah. here like they're watching Yes, and Evie was going crazy because she felt like she was being watched. Yeah. So I think that the gods are going to show up and they're going to have to fight the gods. And I would have liked just that, not a baby. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everybody back. I could do that. Gods instead of like, oh, the baby is going to save everything. Like, yeah. Yeah, that would have been a better plot line. I think, you're right. and plus the gods will probably have something to say about her being pregnant. Period. Like you guys mm -hmm. are breaking the rules. What like, rules though? Who are anything. you not to Everybody break the rules? That, but how, where is it written down that they, they can't canoodle, you know? Because they're supposed to kill each other, not create life. This is the yeah. opposite of what they're supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be hooking up. You're supposed to be stabby, stabby. Go, come on. Yeah. That's just what happening. have your other to start with. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, yeah, it's hard to say. And that's one, one of the things that it keeps me uh, eager for the next book. As I'm really curious mm -hmm. how she ties everything up. The gods uh, uh, coming to the plane and interfering would be interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only way to explain why Earth hasn't frozen over without the sun. Is that the mm -hmm. gods are still giving them warmth or something. Yeah, I wonder if it's kind of a a time warp, right? Where, like, the um, there's... Every, the rest of the, the real earth is like suspended in time while the earth that the taro are playing on is this hellscape with no night or no day. I don't know. Cause the queen of cups was like, we can rebuild our world without you and we want to kill all of you. So yeah. we can start rebuilding. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. And it's driving me crazy. Cause I want to know how it all works. <laughs> I don't think you're going to find out how that all works. <laughs> 
Well, I'm going to be disappointed if when the game is over or when the book is, the series is over, we don't have a clear understanding. I mean, mm-hmm. it was all, we deserve that. We've hung in for all these books. We yeah. deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. I Absolutely. And it'll be the biggest plot hole of the entire series. I don't expect to get an explanation for why there's no sun, personally. I... <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> well, if the if the gods do come down, if they do, mm-hmm. I mean, I can imagine that we would get like a story or yeah, some you know, sort of explanation, right? Whether it so is, this is like on an alternate yeah. plane, or you just can't see the sun anymore, but it's still there, or something. Yeah, I don't know how they're mm-hmm. counting days if the sun never rises. I don't know. I don't either. Another question. Mo- yeah. Most most watches would not work. Well, maybe they would. Mm-hmm. They would. The solid state stuff. I'm just thinking out loud. Things still work when there's fuel for them, so I guess that would be okay. Uh, yeah. That's the other thing. How is there still so much gasoline on the roads? Like in random abandoned cars, and they are still finding people on the roads and taking their stuff. And- Because haven't the militias swept through this area at least once? Yeah, that's the same plot hole we keep talking about. We just have to accept that one. I know. We just have to accept that one, Casey. (laughs) But I mean, even though now they're finding gas, but they're not finding food, remember? Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, everything's gone. That's good. So why wouldn't the gas be gone, too? I don't know, man. Yeah. People starved, but left their cars. I I don't know. So I got to know. Did you guys, were you surprised at all by the inactive card and who he was? Was it obvious to you? Like, we knew, what's his name? Yeah. Paul, right? Was yeah. it Paul? We knew that he was lying because mm-hmm. I believed Evie, right? She has oh, never been an unreliable narrator. So I believed her. Uh, but I didn't expect him per se. Like, I thought maybe he might be working for somebody, but I didn't expect him to be the card. Same. I, I was very suspicious of him, especially last time, Nicola, you said, like, people don't take med- or drugs for seizures or something like yeah. that. Yeah, for strokes. Yeah, after that, I was really suspicious of him, and he was just too nice, and everybody was too reliant on him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was like drugging their food or something like mm-hmm. evil for evil sake. Yeah. The first time I read it, mm-hmm. I was so disappointed that the, the hanged man or the inactivated card was, wasn't Jack. I was so disappointed. I really, really wanted it to. Be- I'm not disappointed in that. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm glad Jack is human. Although I still don't think he's human. He's too lucky and he's too something to be just human. You know, uh, even Death said at one point, like, Matthew's taken, or he's never been so involved with a mortal before, Mm -hmm. or something like that. Like, they keep hinting at it, and hinting at it, and hinting at it. And (laughs) and the last book, Matthew said he was upside down. See, this is what I think. Maybe Jack is something that they don't know about. Maybe he is thrown in by the gods. But I do think that maybe he's, for some reason, he's new to this round because no one remembers him from before. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody else seems to remember everything else based on, you know, their chronicles or whatever. Not everybody, but a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So maybe... I I still kind of think he's human. I think that his whole role is that he keeps... Evie from going full on Red Witch, right? He keeps her around this round, but not right. before. That's mm-hmm. what's different about this round. Yeah. Yeah. But he's super lucky. Like, if we didn't know Zara was lucky, I'd say he was the luck card. Because he gets out of everything and he can find anything. And he's just, you know, he was caught by the slavers and he managed to get out at the last second. And that seems to be his. Well, only because no helped him. Yeah, no, like he gets help at the last second. He manages to survive when all the ships went down. He managed or he like wasn't on the right. ship by two feet right. or something. Like he's he's stupid lucky. <laughs> There, there's got to be some he reason. Be right. I don't know any other human that's that lucky. He might be right. I don't know. So I've I've known 
uh, up to now what was going to happen, but I do not know it will happen after this book. <laughs> so. I am split. I do. I agree with Nicola. I feel like he is human, but I mm-hmm. also agree with Casey in that I do feel like the gods had a hand in putting him where he is. Mm hmm. Because they want something to happen or they are not having enough fun and this will increase the fun factor. I don't know. But he is not a coincidence, I don't think. No, not a coincidence. And he's definitely something. That's my my two cents. (laughs) Yeah, I could see if the gods are actually watching. Maybe they're throwing a little luck his way just to keep things more interesting. Because in a way, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the players up till now have been thinking that he was hurting Evie's chances of winning, right? Because preventing yeah. her from using her full range of powers. Um, but now maybe that turns out to be an interesting turn of events. So the gods are going, hmm, what do we do to keep this this new twist in play? I could see that. Yeah, because yeah, now think about this. Jack is to the point where he's telling her to use it. He's like, yeah. use it, let her out. Let her out. Yeah, he's gonna have to. <laughs> oh, he's freaked out by it. He was scared of her when she hung everybody on that ship. It sounds like it was a pretty gruesome scene. Yeah. yeah, and he is freaked out about it, but he is also thinking about the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. You're gonna die. We're gonna die. This kid's gonna die. Use use what you got. Yeah. Okay. This is gonna be scary, but do it. <laughs> I'll bring you back. Yep. He's like, and he did. He's like, I, I got you. I'll figure it out. Yep. Just do what you got to do to save our asses. And she does. Yep. Uh, of course, the the witch wants to stay because, you know, she can take care of this kid better than Evie can. Yeah. And I kind of agree with that. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure the witch cares much about the baby, but... I think, well, I mean, it is inside of her, so. Yeah, it's inside of her. It's what she's growing and, you know, she's quote unquote Mother Earth. It's all about nurturing and mothering and being a mother. And that's part of who she is. And I think, yeah, the witch would kill anybody or anything that came near the baby, but protect the baby and love it. And it's in the witch's own way. Yeah, I mean, even if she's side eyeing the kid the whole time, she's still not going to let anybody kill yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. By that, I just don't know how much how nurturing she'd be after the, all the enemies are dead. <laughs> oh, you know what? Don't get me wrong. She might be the mother that's no wire hangers up in this bitch. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she might not be the best mom, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> But well, no. I feel like if she does have this child and if that happens, and she gets to the end, I feel like if the game doesn't break, then she will be alive at the end. They're not gonna. I mean, I can't imagine the author letting her die with a baby inside. I mean, I just can't see her doing mm-hmm. it. No, I mean that would no. break all the rules. Your hero and heroine. I mean, yeah. I, I could see maybe Eric dying and leaving the field to mm-hmm. Jack. But um, I don't think that Evie's going to die. I think, or maybe they all kind mm-hmm. of die, but then come back as humans. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're, maybe their cards die. I don't know. <laughs> this is why I, I'm a reader, not a, not a writer. <laughs> well, I do feel like if they do have the kid, I hope that they flash forward. This is what I really want. I want a flash forward to when the child is older and maybe where they're hearing the stories or getting the stories because maybe they'll have to fight the next round. Something, something like that. You want a baby log, an epilogue about the baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I mean, you're going to drag us into this. You might as well finish it. So that could just be the next book telling the baby what happened. (laughs) No, God, please. No, no. It'll be like how I met your mother. Oh, this is the no. of your oh, father. No. You're both your fathers. Oh, jeez, that's pretty oh, messed up. Or, or a Taro oh. version of Mamma Mia. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'll just start singing Abba songs, and everything will be fine. The sun will be out. They'll be dancing in the water. Yeah, that would be a weird. <laughs> 
<laughs> it would. Not that it isn't weird already. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. Okay, where were we? <laughs> I was thinking about how this whole time, like Evie. <laughs> It's all so logical now. It's so plain. The whole time her grandmother was trying to tell her and she was just not hearing any of it the entire time. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, the things didn't make sense until she saw what they were about. You know what I mean? That's the, that's a classic thing in prophecies, right? They're, they just sound like nonsense until you look at it in hindsight and go, oh, this is what they meant by the rat. Oh, this is what they meant by the, you know, whatever. But when you don't, when you don't have that context, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. Like, did you guys? She's been dealing with Matthew for a year. She dealt with her grandmother as a child. It's Okay, when you read all that stuff, did it make sense? She's not even it? trying. But did you think when you read all of those predictions, did you did they make sense to you? Would you have known what they meant? No. Okay, so I, okay, minus the predictions, when someone says they're trying to kill me, <laughs> I would be like, "What do you mean someone's trying no, to kill tell you? Me who Explain to me details. how someone's trying to kill you." Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't just write that off. But the other stuff I might not know yet that would click into place, like when Paul revealed himself. Mm -hmm. But who's trying to kill you? <laughs> like, what? How? Tell me something, lady, so I can figure out if this is true or not. Like, yeah, I think you guys have high know. expectations of dealing with dealing You know, and that is my mistake because I have said many a times that Evie is an <laughs> idiot. So I don't know why I expect her character to ask them questions. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think she's an idiot. I think she's a teenager. I do. She is a teenager. Well, I guess trying. you know that's me being old. <laughs> that's, that's my problem. Yeah. She's not trying. She's been dealing with this for over a year, and she still brushes it all off. She's like, oh, you say there's a rat? Do you mean like a literal rat eating rope somewhere? What are you talking about? And I agree with Casey, because guess what? Even if... After you've been through so many things, you've seen so many things, why are you still writing off things? Like, it's just not possible. That seems stupid. Isn't everything possible after the stuff you've seen? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. It's like, oh, I have a ghost in my house, but if someone else tells me they have a ghost, you're like, oh, ghosts don't exist. <laughs> Fuck. Yes, they do. Like, I'll get it. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. That's Evie. That's Evie in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> I just want her to try. Can she just try once, please? Yeah. I right. her. Moving, on. <laughs> Moving on from Evie's inadequacies. Just before we started recording, mm -hmm. we were talking a little bit about the triad that we have going here. And I was oh, yes. saying that I feel like we're getting a little bit of foreshadowing for a possibility that they might just stay a big triangle potentially because we've got the the marriages in the the coastal town um what was it called again paradise i can't remember what they called that town and um casey pointed out that um saul had a had a, th a threesome also threesome. yeah so i feel like there's some groundwork being laid for the possibility that they might um keep the triangle indefinitely honestly i oh would prefer God. that ending over jack walking away trying to be noble me because i was pissed when i started fighting over who gets to leave <laughs> that was annoying. like oh you go no no i'll go no i'll go i'm gonna be what? the noble one no what? i'm gonna be the noble one. Oh my god <laughs> No, just live together in this castle, work together, alternate nights, oh, do whatever no. you got to do. Oh. <laughs> Don't drink together, <laughs> sit under the roof, be boys. Just... <laughs> uh. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I want that per se. I just... Uh, yeah, I don't know if I want the th because they're honestly their threesome. If they had a threesome situation, it would be much different than what old boy had with <laughs> his true. boyfriend and girlfriend because they were all kind of yeah. sleeping together, mm -hmm. right? They're obviously a bi. Yeah, they're all sleeping together. Over here, it would be Evie. One night goes to Ark. Mm -hmm. One night goes to Jack. Okay, they're not all going to be together. Uh, well, no, Ark and Jack have a really good bromance, and they feel like they're <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> You know, 
Jack is his first friend in 2,000 years. He has that relationship. And just because it's not romantic and just because they can't touch doesn't mean it's not as strong. And I will fight this. This is the <laughs> fight me. I, I can't see these two guys sharing in that way. They already are. They are not I think, not I think willingly. Tamar, I mean, They're just, I think Tamar they means like in the same bed together. Yeah, no, they wouldn't be in the same right. bed because then they'd touch and die. Right, but. right. <laughs> but I still don't think they're willingly sharing. So this is why I say that. Because obviously Ark went crazy. So he doesn't care what she's doing because he's crazy. He's not, he doesn't have his, his brain clear. So if it was clear, he'd be having all kind of conniptions when she got back with, <laughs> you know, he was. Jack. He was and super thinking, jealous and he was angry. And Paul was upset by yeah. that. He's like, I can't control him because he's so jealous and angry. So I just don't see how, and even Jack, like he was okay with Evie being with Ark, but that was because he thought he was never going to see her again. Because there's still that mindset of either they want to live or. on the same property. Well, I'm sorry. I don't think they want to be on the same property. Hey, let's share. No. Probably not, but that's, that's still better than them both fighting over who gets to leave. Oh. They both should die. <laughs> well, if they live, I don't think they'll have their arcana powers anymore. So I don't think the whole death yeah. by touching will, will be a factor. But that's that's my brain. I that's not who knows what'll happen. I know it's so if up in the air and because so many things are different than the last, you know, the history of what's going on. Who knows? I mean it's really a a free for all. <laughs> it really is. Everybody could die. Everybody could live. <laughs> Who knows? I think I thought it was interesting at the end of this book. You know, yeah. I'm keeping my spreadsheet, and um, it's exactly half and half. So there's 22 arcane all together, and 11 of them are dead, and 11 them 11 are still alive. And uh, of the ones that are still alive, um, there's only two that are not sort of at least loosely allied with either death or EV or both. So. There's Kent, there's um, mm -hmm. Zara and Richter and Saul, and Saul is potentially going to be a good guy. Yeah, Saul is kind of like just going along, so yeah. he's not found I think out. He might, yeah. I think he might be my vote for the red shirt. So I think he might die in the big conflict, and then the alliance will be sad, but they'll keep going. Either that or it will be... If the gods don't come and reset the world, they need him, because yeah. he's the son. He fix yeah. everything so or maybe it'll be somebody that I more, like lark. lark or gabriel i don't know i mean lark doesn't really have anything to live for anymore yeah. after finn's death she's so broken that i see herself oh, like sad. sacrificing herself yeah i could see um, that i mean because she feels guilty about trying to kill mm -hmm. evie because she's like oh man i'm so sorry <laughs> i just need to go yeah. be by myself yeah. she's losing her humanity i think they, they've talked a couple times about how her eyes turn red and she spends less and less time or more and more time out with, you know, with her soul out with the animals or however it, go, however it works. And the guys just brushed her off as sleeping all day, but I figured she was trying to recruit more animals. She lost her lion, tiger, mm -hmm. and bear, so she would probably be trying to find but not her, uh, other creatures. Why is the tigers and bears? There. Oh my! <laughs> there was that lion. <laughs> what? Okay, the lion, you guys. The lion. I know. I'm like, wow. And then they're eating the lion, and they're like, hmm, pretty good. It's delicious. Let's keep eating it. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess so. You need some protein. Mm hmm. It's the first thing the baby let her eat and not throw up. Yeah, lion. <laughs> Jack is, see, again, Team Jack. I mean, only yep, Jack yep, could bring like, back a lion. Like a you to carry a dead lion through the snow yeah, and escape mm -hmm. an angel on wings. <laughs> well, he's too goddamn lucky. <laughs> he's just he's just that awesome of a guy. He's very um, romance mm -hmm. hero-y, you know. He is. And that's why I feel like if they both don't die, that's why she's going to end up with Jack. Jack was there at the beginning. They had that connection early on. He's going to be, he's going to make it through to the end. It's her, it's Evie and Jack. I'm sorry. I'm I calling it. I think you're right. It. I think it's death 
Ty is saving them, and then she'll have to tell the baby all about his real daddy. Yep. Yep. I think that Maybe. that's a strong possibility. But Death would have to die. Yep. For that to be. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think they would also have to resolve the situation of uh, Evie being immortal. Like, she doesn't want that either. Mm-hmm. So. Well, they'll have to end the game. Right. Right. It's, it's got to be a pretty big finale, right? That's what I've been, that's what's been driving mm-hmm. me through some of the books that were, you know, like a little less than, than what I wanted. Um, that's the thing that keeps me wanting to, to get to the end of the series. Like what's going to happen? I have no under, I cannot figure out how she's going to resolve all these threads. No. And especially, you know, I'm glad you had a count, but to realize that we're only yeah. halfway through the cards mm-hmm. being, you know, and it's like there's only one book left. Like it's very out of whack. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. really. Yeah, it make, does make me think that know? a lot of them will survive because of that. Either that, or a whole bunch of them are going to die in the confrontation with Richter. Well, Richter's going down. He's going down one way or another. Yeah, he's too much of a bad guy not to go down. Yeah, he's pretty mm-hmm. awful. I could see it happening if Zara mm-hmm. stole his luck. Like if she betrayed him. But it depends on what point like mm-hmm. would how many of their quote enemies would they have to have defeated by then i don't know if she would do that before they took down arik and evie but, but probably not by accident you know like she did with her dad no because she's learned to control it now oh i'm sorry. she's had a year to practice and so she's so much stronger and better at it that she would do it deliberately so can she touch people without taking their luck now mm-hmm. i don't know I don't know either. So I think I that um, it's possible that she could take it accidentally. Like maybe they could maneuver the, you know, maybe um, yeah. Evie's plants could, well, I guess she can't really touch Richter when he's on fire, but um, if she pushed Zara into him or something. They'd have to capture them both. And I don't see that happening in the first place. Yeah. So maybe. Because Zara too much. I don't know. So I'm just speculating on, on, you know, if you look at the strengths and weaknesses, who could take Richter down? And I think Zara would be one because he trusts her. And if he took, if she took all his luck, then, you know, he could trip or something and that, you know what I mean? Um, Mm -hmm. Or Matthew, Mm -hmm. you know, Matthew's a definitely kind of the definition of a wild card. I don't know if he could make Richter go crazy or something. Did he win, or did he just kill Evie? I thought he won, but I don't remember for sure. So I thought, was this the one before Death started winning? I don't know how many, I don't know if it says how many games there have ever been altogether. Eric remembers like the last three or four, and the Chronicles talk about them, but the Chronicles, you know, they're on paper, and they they don't, they're old, so... Uh, yeah. So I don't know how, I think it's vague on purpose, personally. Probably. Yeah. Oh, but at one point, who said that um, the hanged man was the only person who could kill Richter because he would convince him to kill himself? Or did I make that up? Um, I think that that... Maybe it was the cup people, the, the woman who was the taking the lead for the cups. Wasn't she the one saying Maybe. Because then she yeah. would say, well, you can't kill him because you don't have this. So, Well, yeah, she was also saying that about Paul himself. But I thought she said yeah. that Richter couldn't die. Although she said something else about him and Evie can't remember that. Unless that was it. I don't know. There were, oh. there were some sketchy parts of this. Yeah, book. I think that was that was put forth as a possible way to take down Richter. I didn't, didn't, I don't recall it being said it was the only way. Okay. Mm -hmm. I may have misread that. Isn't there one more card though, other than the hangman? Wasn't there one more that I'm forgetting about that we was all redacted out? Like what was that one that That was was everything was was redacted? Do you remember? That Mm -hmm. was the hangman's card? Matthews had most of his redacted, but there's still a few words around it. Um, but yeah, the hanged man was completely rejected. Okay. Yeah, they're all accounted for now. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. And there's 11 still alive. Uh, the Empress, the Fool, Death, the Tower, Judgment, Strength, 
the high priestess, the emperor, the sun, wheel of fortune, and the chariot. I like the 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 empress or priestess. Wh- priestess. Which one is the water lady? Priestess. Pri- priestess, high priestess. I like Cersei. I do too. It was a little creepy to find out she needs blood sacrifice to stay uh, powerful. I thought that was interesting that her um, mm. her miners were not making the right kind of sacrifice, and she was weak because of it. Even with all the boats going down and killing, yeah, because, however many workers, because she said it has to hurt. So the losing all those random humans was not hurting any anybody. It was not hurting the people who were making the sacrifice. So the princess, what was her name, mm-hmm. the Queen of Cups, mm-hmm. I forget her name. Um, it didn't hurt her. She didn't miss anybody that was that was sacrificed. So it didn't count. But yeah, killing off that whole suite or the whole hmm. suit of of minor arcana, I think, is definitely going to get the attention of the gods there because that's that's and the other minor arcana, right? They're going to start rallying and coming after them because nobody's supposed to hurt the other. Like, yep, they're not supposed to be interacting like that. Yeah, that's disrupting the game. More disruptions. More people doing the things that are not appropriate. <laughs> So there's only four suits. I thought there was, I just looked it up. So there's only four suits. So we know that uh, the cups are gone and we're probably going to confront the pentacles uh, in mm-hmm. the next book. But there's a couple of them that we haven't seen. So I know we kind of already talked about the threesome, but I just had a uh-huh. thought and I kind of just want to piggyback just for a second. I mean, we're so quick to make a reason why both of these guys are chasing after Evie and why they both want to take care of her and raise her Mm -hmm. baby. But (laughs) if it were reversed, like let's pretend it was a hero and then he had two females chasing after him and, Oh, here goes my long lost kid. I mean, I feel like we would be calling the women suckers for chasing this guy who can't make a choice and then raising a baby. That's not yours. Probably. So, like, that's why I don't feel like, um, I don't know. I don't you, feel a way by feeling that they shouldn't be all together. <laughs> I just, I mean, if we're going to start getting into that, I don't like Evie enough to think she's worthy of both of them. But if this works in this story, yes, fine, whatever, just do it. But, yeah. you know, she's not strong enough for both of them, but they both love her for whatever reason. Yeah. And I guess I've just, in the grand scheme of things, I've never been one to love a love triangle anyway. I've always been of the school where I'd rather have a couple that just go through some things and figure out how to be Mm -hmm. together versus a love triangle. I've kind of always shit on love triangles. I just don't really care for them. So I guess this isn't helping. (laughs) (laughs) So even more so. Yeah. um, Yeah. Well, both of you've read a lot more YA than I have. And I think that the triangle is kind of a staple in YA. Yeah. It can be, but I've read some books where, okay, it starts out as a triangle, but then you quickly see it's not really a triangle Mm -hmm. at all. There really isn't a choice. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't go on and on and on. And, oh, I can't make a choice. It kind of (laughs) might, it might start that way, but really quickly we see, who, who and she sees and they see who you're supposed to yeah. be with. There's um, always one clear winner. Like um, with the Grisha trilogy that we read, she was always in love with her childhood uh-huh. friend. Like always. She yeah. was attracted uh-huh. to the dark guy, but she was always, she was one and done. Yeah. So that was kind of, it was a triangle, but you know, you always had the clear winner. With Evie, there is no clear winner. Like, she really, truly right. loves both of them. Cole has taken the love triangle to another mm-hmm. level, I think. Like, it's just so extra. Which is why I think it's going to have to end in a triangle, because how could you kill one over the other? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could kill somebody, but... <laughs> well, she's done it before. I mean, clearly, she doesn't mourn for that long. She'll be all right. I mean, she would cry. <laughs> Don't be mean. Yeah, she she cried. No, she would cry, but in a month she'd move on. Just saying, yeah, she's gonna have a Probably baby. Though. She'll be busy now because she spent that month wondering if she could save him. Maybe unless the baby dies. Yeah, 
trying to control some baby's possible powers. Who knows what the kid's going to be? Or maybe he's just human, like they said in the book. Maybe that's why, um, if that's true. It's coming from two major arcana. It's coming from life and death. Like, that baby's not going to be just human. I didn't think so. But one of the characters, I think it was maybe the Queen of Cups that said that too. Like, maybe that was the reason why, you know, Paul wasn't able to control her. You know, it kind of negated that because he can't control humans, Mm. you know? So they don't really know. They think it's either because she escaped the Hierophant or because of the baby. And nobody really knows because it's never happened before. We shall see. Okay, I'm done ranting about that. I'm going to move on completely now. Sorry, I just had to. That's okay. You can rant away. Are we ready to rate it? Oh, I guess. Is there anything else we you want to cover, Casey? I mean, we move on. We've kind of touched on all of the plot holes. This book is just—it's on a very thin line of believability and just Swiss <laughs> cheese of plot holes. <laughs> like, What's your biggest plot hole, Casey? What's the biggest one that irks you the most? The biggest thing: the fucking sun. <laughs> That's driving me crazy. I just. How can the sun disappear and the earth is fine and they're not freezing to death? Like we've we've seen so many movies where the sun disappears and the sun blows up and earth is gone or like look at Pluto. Pluto doesn't get the sun and Pluto's frozen. Mm-hmm. So I'm just I'm hoping that there's some sort of explanation for why the sun is gone. And I know most people can just look right over that, but I can't because that's just key world building. Okay. Like, that's so important that the sun is gone. There has to be some reason why the earth is still the earth and they're not all dead and frozen. I don't believe the sun is gone. I believe there's uh, so much stuff in the atmosphere that you can't see the sun anymore. So it's still warming the earth, you know, to some degree to keep, keep them from all turning into popsicles. But uh, that's what I think. But they would have said something because Evie keeps saying the sun just doesn't know. rise anymore. Like the sun's just gone because that because for in book three i think they were talking about how the sun would come up for just a couple hours and then disappear Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i don't understand where the earth's axis is tilted that they don't see the sun anymore like are they on the side are they where the (laughs) north pole is now is global warming (laughs) ruining the earth (laughs) what is happening here (laughs) i need to know See, all of these things would be so easy to just disregard if we weren't on Earth. Like, put it anywhere else. Like, just make up some shit. Yes, like, put them on a different yeah. planet. Put them on a different planet, and I will believe it in right. a heartbeat. But the fact that they are on Earth, yeah, but then the stakes are lower, like, right? Because in yeah. this, in this world, uh, the way it's set up is they have to finish the game, or the Earth will stay horrible forever. So, mm-hmm. if they. If they just have I mean, a different playing field somewhere in in a another planet, and then the winter gets to go back to Earth or something, then the the stakes are different. Yeah. Hmm. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Or the worst ending ever. <laughs> Evie wakes up and it was all a dream. It's all a dream. <laughs> I thought of that too. <laughs> she used to go back to high school mm-hmm. and hang yeah. out with Mel, and then tell Mel all about this and go find. Brandon, her boyfriend, mm-hmm. yeah, her boyfriend, and break up with him to go be with his half brother. Yeah, yeah, it was all a dream. <laughs> she better not. <laughs> Cressley Cole better not. I mean, I, I trust her not to do that. <laughs> yeah, and Evie was going crazy with us for years before, so I don't think it was a dream. Yeah. It can't was, be a dream. I was in a, it was all a hallucination. <laughs> And she's in a mad crazy house. She's locked up somewhere. <laughs> like, no, she's crazy. <laughs> oh, that would be just as bad. Oh, that would be just as bad as the dream. Oh, that'd be so bad. Oh. All right, let's rate this thing. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I give it a four stars. Even though I'm just bonkers over the world building and I need to know. I'm still sucked into these books and I sit down and I read them in a night and it's just, it's so engaging and Evie drives me so batshit crazy, (laughs) but I love, I love this story. Like it's really good. It hooks me. I want to know how it ends 
And then I sit here and pick it apart with you guys. Uh-huh. I love that. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, yeah, no, writing wise, it's it's a good, solid story. If I had a red pen and could fix the stuff, there's a lot I would do. <laughs> but four stars for me. Okay. Nicola? Um, you know, I love this series, but I this book frustrated me a lot because I just felt like not enough happened. Um there were a couple of interesting aspects to it. The hangman was interesting. The coastal town was interesting. The minor arcana was interesting. But I really was just waiting for the game to progress, and it didn't progress enough to suit me. So I just feel like it's a three. It's just frustrating me because it's not progressing the arc. Okay. Wow. That surprised me a little, surprised me a little bit. I know, because I've been raving about this whole series. Yeah. But this book, particularly, I wanted more to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> for <laughs> myself, I actually, I, you know, I read this, a, I don't know, a week ago, a week and a half ago or something. And when I first closed the book or ended the audio book, I was like, oh, four, instant four, because Although I have all these issues with Evie, I don't like the love triangle. I kind of think some of it Mm -hmm. is ridiculous. I really was entertained for entertainment's sake, you know? So Mm -hmm. I had a good time with it and I just blew through it. So I'm like, oh, it was entertaining if nothing else. So, okay, good. But now I'm kind of teetering because I really... Like always, when we get together and start talking, I'm like, oh, gosh. Well, maybe I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. <laughs> so I feel like I'm going to say three. But, okay, so substance-wise, I want to say three. And entertainment value, I want to say four. But on paper, it's going to be three. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was too complicated. To, I know it was. I'm to break your rules and allow a half star rating. No, I won't do it only because you can't do it. You cannot do it on um, Goodreads. So you can't do it. (laughs) I won't allow it. (laughs) I feel like um, I probably would have given it a four on a first reading. Um, It didn't hold up to a second reading as well for me. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see what happens with the finale and how you take to it, Nicola, being that this will be your first read. (laughs) Yeah. You know, with the lens that you have reevaluated all the previous books. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do. Mm-hmm. And thank you for not spoiling anything. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> I don't know if I was able to hold all of that in as we discussed it was everything. You know, a couple of times, like, do you want me to tell you? Because <laughs> I could tell you. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> no, yes, no, no, yes, no, 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 I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did do an excellent job holding in the main stuff. Like I oh, uh, that pregnancy, that would have slipped right out of my think, lips, I'm telling you. Uh, I think the only thing that I did kind of throw you guys the, the crumb about was and I still don't remember where it came up in the books was the the last game, the the um disaster was the bubonic plague in Europe. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. So that wasn't really a spoiler though. No, it was just a little factoid. Yeah. But okay. um, it, it's, I, I, and I can't remember where it said it in the book, but um, there was some little hint. And then in the, in the, um, in the anthology where Arik said how long it had been, you know, when he's watching his icons disappear and he gave like the exact number of days. If you go look up the publication date and subtract that amount of time off of it, you're smack in the middle of the bubonic plague. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end. Anything else, ladies? I'm still team triad. (laughs) Okay. So (laughs) a final say, I am Jack. Casey wants a a, a trio. What do you want, Nicola? What is your way in? I think that Arik is going to die in the big confrontation, then it'll be Eric, and then it'll be it will be Jack, and I will not be unhappy about that as long as uh, Evie becomes mortal. Okay, you heard it here first. Let us know (laughs) in the comments below what you think. What is your guess on how this whole you know love triangle thing ends, and what did you think about the ending of this book? I would love to 
know what you guys think and we talk about that in the facebook group so yes and if you are not if you're listening to this on any podcatcher out there and you are not in our facebook group you need to join so that you know what book we are reading next because if the next book isn't out we're going to pick something different and you don't want to miss that so make sure you're a part of the group so you will be in the know with what we're going to read all right so i guess that's it guys all right yeah Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you guys next month. Happy reading. Happy reading. Bye. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening. And until next time, happy reading. Happy reading.